Beautiful. Can I tell you about Arch? When you uh, ninety four, what was your first year? Ninety three, wasn't it? Uh, 92. 92. So you'd been yeah. playing like a teens game or something because you took a while to get there. Do you remember playing against the Sydney Swans in one of my few outings against Sydney Swans? You were terrorising Simon Minton Connell. And I walked up and clenched my fist and feigned as if I was going to punch you in the head behind play. Kingy, I've never seen a man less worried in his life. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually do remember that. But uh, I might not have looked like I was flinching on the outside, but I was flinching on the inside. Don't worry. Oh, he was just stone. He's just like, oh, what's that? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I'm surprised you remember that. Well done. It, was, it reminds us of another flinch, non-flinch. Glenn, can you remember back to the Carey return <laughs> visit, the, the return game in, I think it was 03, start of 03? Yeah, no, I do. Yes, I actually vividly remember that night because obviously being so nervous before the game and <clears throat> yeah, well, the it's a bit of a myth the the when Wayne flinched when I, I cocked my fists because a lot of people go, oh, did you really want to hit him? I said, yeah, well, probably at the time I did, but I knew if I threw one, I was going to get that five back on the chin. So. <laughs> Once he flinched, I said, "Yep, that's enough for me," and I just walked away. <laughs> that's the only night I've been disappointed. It didn't. It didn't. Didn't get, erupt. It didn't get going. I think that in this time, Glenn, sometimes you got to make sacrifice for the point of entertainment for people at the moment. Any chance a rematch? Any chance we can organise something in the ring? You and Wayne just go to a good charity match. You could raise a lot of money yes. for charity, oh, Arch. Yeah. We need it. Yes, yeah. you got a lot of money what for would, charity. What would be your thoughts to that, Glenn? Well, not a chance in hell, as you know, David. <laughs> Wayne probably boxed the best that I've ever seen. He could have been a heavyweight boxer. So if I went in the ring with him, I would try my hardest, but I've got no doubt I'd end up on my back in within a minute and a half. So that. I'm um, tipping if if what if we modify the rules for gouging <laughs> and, and you're allowed to fight a little dirty? <laughs> I've heard Wayne's a very accomplished uh, uh, perform pugilist with the with the gloves on. What if you could fight a little dirty, which I reckon is up the Noble Park Avenue? Oh, I've got if they allow me in the ring with a baseball bat. Um, <laughs> And, he does, and he's got nothing, I'll, I'll be up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Arch, hey, d- on, a, on a serious note, that game, I think it's one of those games in in recent history where most people will know where they were when they were watching it. As a journo, I was sitting in the press box. Kingy, you would have been playing. Dermot, I presume you would have been watching or commentating. Yep, commentating. commentating. With, uh, I think Eddie yeah. was com- It was a Channel yep. 9 game, wasn't it, I yeah, think? Yeah, it was. I can't remember Arch being... So anxious and, and with anticipation about what was going to happen that night and to play it out like that. What was it like for you and, and Steve-O and the Kangaroos and Kingy joining here in the lead-up, in the rooms, on the ground? Can you, can you tell us about some of the, the feelings that you remember having? Yeah, well, obviously anxious. I don't think I've ever been so nervous before a game because of the obviously the build-up leading into it was huge. Um, but strangely enough, I didn't speak to Anthony during the week about it. I, I spoke to him probably half an hour before the game. Um, so I went to Anthony and said, you know, what are we doing? Are we, are we playing or are we fighting? And uh, <laughs> he said, no, 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 I'm not bringing myself down to anyone's level. We just go out there, we win the four points and we go home. Within 10 minutes, steve is punching him in the stomach and throwing him on the ground. <laughs> was, dude. Oh, You're just drifting yeah. out of screen yeah. there, Arch. You just realign yourself and yeah, then keep going. That's yeah, it. beautiful. Sorry, well that. That's yep. it, beautiful. Yep. So the That's tension on the... Going. They're not great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Kingy and Arch, join in. You guys talk here, please, for the tension on the ground, Kingy and, and, and Glenn. Co- correct me if I'm wrong, Glenn. Did, did you have a meeting pre-game to say, righto, it's, we could go the ball here? There's half a dozen in the meeting. Let's just go the ball. Leave that to you and to, to Steve. That, that's something that I can vaguely recall that there was a chat. Hey, let's just play footy. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, like I said before, when I actually ran out there, once we had the chat, so I just thought we're playing. But um, obviously, when you cross the white line and tensions boil over, um, then it turned. I never, it never got really nasty, as we saw on the. Uh, as, you know, if you look back on the game, but um, yeah, but the the overriding emotion that night was sadness. You know, <laughs> here's a guy that we were best mates with for ten years. He was our captain. He was a he was a hero of ours as well. So um, afterwards, you thought, well, how did it get to that? We've gone from best mates to, you know, just about having a fight on the footy field. 
But so much happened positively after that, and I mean this. And you know, I, I remember Art, um, Eddie Maguire putting you and Glenn, um, Wayne Archer, uh, Wayne Archer, Wayne Carey together for a, for an interview, and that's probably something yeah. you didn't want to do. But the fact of the matter is, because of it, you got a house built for Mario Neppi, who um, yeah. who was uh, handicapped. Is he was he? I don't know what the right word is. Help me here. Yeah, cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, and yeah. you and Carey said we'll do this, and I think you raised a couple of hundred thousand dollars and got a house for you for you for your yeah. for your great mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was the positive that came out of it because just not long after all all that stuff happened, um, yeah, my friend got Kingy's friend as well. He was a, a real good friend of the uh, the football club, Murray Neppy Wilcox. His name is. Cerebral palsy, he used to come to training all the time and he'd lost his stepfather and his mother like within 12 months um, and basically had nothing. So um, we wanted to, I wanted to raise some money for him just to help out. So I rang Wayne because uh, he was, Wayne was uh, Murray Neppy's hero and uh, Wayne was very close to him as well. So I rang him and said, would you do an interview and, you know, put everything aside and we'll try and raise some money. So I went to Channel 9 with my then manager, Ron Joseph, and we we went into the car park and I said, so what do you reckon we'll ask for, 20 grand? And Ron goes, turn it up. It'd be 200 grand for this interview, because I had no idea about this. So we went and saw Eddie, Eddie, we we told him the figure, Eddie nearly fell off his chair and said, what do you want the money for? And I said, I want to build a house for Marion Epi. And to Eddie's credit, you know, obviously Eddie's a bloody legend, particularly when it comes to this sort of Stuff he he went and spoke to one of the sponsors, Metricon Homes. Metricon got on board and built him a, a brand new house, and it was all state of the art, so it was all set up for his disability. So, yeah, I, uh, I can really have to thank Eddie Maguire for that one. 